This is my match reaction to the Sheffield United Fulham loss. Um, I'm in a bit of a different environment to what I'm usually in. Uh, I'm actually in the kitchen. I uh, came here to get some food because I was hungry. But I thought, you know, maybe my viewers are hungry for some great content. So I thought, you know, I'd come down and discuss the game. Obviously, a uh, 2-1 loss. And I don't really think there's many takeaways to have. I want to start off by talking about the uh, the Basham injury. And I've got to say, it it's just horrible to watch. And, you know, all my best wishes to Basham. He's, he's been a legend of the lane over the past, what, four, five years. He's done... He's done some special things for us and you know we wish him all the best in his recovery you know now isn't the time to speculate on whether we're going to see him play again obviously we can all hope he does but right now i think the best thing to do is just you know wish him all the best i hope that his recovery goes well from what is a pretty horrific injury and uh in my opinion i think the only takeaway we can have from this game is that it's time for paul like bottom to go Look, we're eight games into the season. We're currently rock bottom in the league. Only picked up one point. It's it's not acceptable. Players are just trotting about. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and name names playing the blame game. Look, all the players are to blame and the managers to blame. But I just don't see him as the man who's going to keep us up. Look, I don't really think we're going to stay up anymore. I was quite optimistic coming into the season. After the first few uh, games, I thought, you know, each time we're playing, we'll look better and better. And I think we all stay up. Then Newcastle happens and you think, right, this isn't exactly ideal, but it's happened to Bournemouth before and Southampton before. And they've stayed up quite comfortably. So maybe we're going to stay up. And then, you know, you think two away games, not the best away games, but certainly something you can maybe see us get a couple of points from. Go to West Ham and we're, we're dire. Right, and then we go away to Fulham, and again we're awful. Right, and it just makes you think: Is Hecky the man? You have an international break now. This is our chance to fire him, get someone else in, give him a week with the players, then let him go into you know Man United at home. Look, Man United at home isn't going to be an easy game, but Man United aren't in great form. They have a poor away record, and also they've got lots of key players out on international duty, um, which is going to affect them going into the game. So, you know, maybe there is a chance for us to get something from that game. And the game after that is a six-pointer versus Wolves. And you think, look, if we want to stay up, we have to give those two fixtures to the next manager and give him the best possible opportunity to get something out of his first couple of games in charge. Because the other option is what? We leave Hecky in charge. He doesn't get anything out of the next two games then at that point he has to go. Because if you go 10 games without a win, I'm sorry, you have to go. So yeah, look, I think I think it's time to bring someone else in. Now in terms of candidates, I really think that there's one man for the job, and it's Chris Wilder. I don't really think there's there's much to say to justify him being the man. Sure, it didn't end very well with him, but then again, there's mitigating circumstances and all of that. Obviously, COVID, blah, 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 right? We've heard it all a million times, but I think... He's the man. Boyhood Blade. Get him back in. Get these players showing passion. Get them fighting again. And I think we'll be fine. Right? Because even you know, in previous years, we started poorly in the Premier League and still stayed up. And I think due to the fact there's lots of poor sides in the league, looking at people like Burnley, looking at people like Bournemouth, looking at people like Everton, looking at people like Wolves, you know, the list goes on, right? It means that we're not even that far from safety, even though we haven't won yet. I think that's given us a good, good opportunity. People haven't capitalised on how bad we are, you know. <laughs> I mean, with three points of safety, you know, at least we are right now. That's that's very good that we've been as poor as we have been, and we're not even that cut adrift. It means we're still in with a good chance, but it just means we have we have to capitalise on this opportunity and get a manager in right now. With Chris Wilder coming back. We're seeing good vibes. We're seeing better football. I think we're going to see a better atmosphere at Bramall Lane. I think everyone all of a sudden is going to start believing we can stay up. And once that belief's back, I think we're going to be fine. Because look, there hasn't been a home game after that Newcastle trouncing. But I don't really think the atmosphere going into that Man United game is going to be very good. And we still have Peckinbottom at the, at the helm. And to be honest, I don't really think there's any other 
candidates. I think it's wild or robust, to be totally honest. We have got the place while the system, you know, partially because a lot of the players we have now, Wilder brought in, you know, they work with Wilder, they understand the system under Wilder. So I think it's a pretty um it's a pretty good fit, right? But yeah, um that's just my opinion on the whole thing. Uh, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go get some food. Uh thanks for watching.